tired of wasting time looking at directories that don't match your breakers or your rooms and trying to figure out what breaker goes to what? Well, today I'm going to show you a real easy and an awesome tool to fix that. So stick around, guys. All right, so we're going to unbox this together. Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. This right here will literally change the way that you guys actually find your breakers. Now, this is not the only brand, but this is the one that I'm reviewing today. This was sent to me just so we're on all on the same page. I'm here to try it out. I have opened it. And I'm gonna open it again with you guys. I put the batteries in it. I have not tried it on a breaker panel or receptacles or anything yet. So I don't know if that works. I want to be able to be transparent with you guys and show you guys if this thing indeed is good. So like I said, this was sent to me. You can buy these on Amazon and I will leave an Amazon link at the end so you guys can buy this if you so choose to. We're gonna go through all this, what you get. Then we're gonna come back, not today, but we're gonna come back with a Klein video with almost the same identical setup and we're gonna see which one is better. The feel, the look, the handling, how it works and all that jazz. So let's open this box up and let's see what we got in here now. So like I said, I just opened this up to make sure the batteries were in it and everything was good. So this is what you get when you, when you get this one right here from Amazon. Now, you get, you can screw it into a uh, keyless fixture, which I'll show you here in just a few minutes. You also get, if you only have a two prong to three prong, there's a two prong, three prong, so you can use your transmitter here or your tester. It does test for GFCI, and if I remember right, uh, reading, that after you unplug this from whatever you're plugged into, it will actually leave the voltage, I believe, on here. Not sure yet, we're gonna try that out and see. But you get your tester, batteries are already in it. You get your clip-clip jumper. So if you only have a wire and you just wanna check wires, you can just see you only have two wires, not the ground, but you need a place for the ground on this. So it'll plug into here, bloop. You can plug it on two wires. These are some pretty heavy duty cords. And you get your circuit tester here. Your receiver. Now this is the receiver part. This also has a non-contact voltage tester on it and a flashlight and a flashlight is right there. Now I do have the Klein one, like I said before, and uh, it's basically the same thing. So, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Right now, you get to check for your voltage, your line, your neutral, and right now it's transmitting. We'll turn this on. And I don't know if it reads, so it doesn't read here. This is what you get. Here's your flashlight. I'm gonna turn it on so you can see in the dark. It tests for your GFCI. It also makes sure that your receptacles are correctly wired and not miswired. Now, miswired backwards where the hot and the neutral are reversed. So this is like an all-in-one exclusive item here. And last but not least, you get the case. Now this case is not a very hard case. Um, you can see it's kind of bendable, but it does have a little cushion in it. So if something was to hit it, it wouldn't break. And you get your, of course, you know all your directions here. We don't need those. Now this will run you about 50 bucks on Amazon. Very good price about priced exactly what you would find in a Klein. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this over to a receptacle real quick. I'm gonna show you how it works. We'll go through two different ones and we'll see what the voltage difference is. We'll see if this thing does indeed show you everything you need to know to make sure it's good. We'll also take it to a GFCI and we'll trip it and make sure that the GFCI function does actually trip the GFCI. And then uh, we'll close this video out. So let's go ahead. Take us to receptacle, plug it in, and we'll see if it does indeed find it the first time, the right time, every time. So let's go see. All right, so what I wanna do is show you right here that this right here says it's 121 volts. This light here says correct. It says correct right on it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it does say correct. This says fault. It says 121.7 volts. It says right here, neutral, line, and earth ground is correct. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to raise this up just a little higher so you can see down. And what'll happen is, is once I find this breaker, which we're gonna go over here together, you'll see it, it will start blinking. So I know visually I can see it. 
So let's go over here to the panel real quick. We'll see if this indeed is the breaker. We'll find it. If it is, turn it off and we'll see what happens. All right, so you can see right here how it's green on circuit five. You come down to seven, boom. And then you go past seven, nothing. And then go all the way down here. So once we get to seven, we know that that's it. So let's turn it off and see what happens. Now you can see it blinking. So that right there tells you that that's the right breaker. Now, also what it ended on, what it ended at was 120 1.4 volts. Everything is correct. So if you're wondering how much volts was on there before, well, it stores it for you, which I think is pretty nice. Now, let's turn it back on and let's see if it'll trip this GFCI because this GFCI and this receptacle is tied together. So let's turn it back on and let's see, indeed, if it will trip the GFCI like it's supposed to. Okay, so with it back on now, let's go ahead and hit, as you can see, everything's correct. Tells you what the voltage is again. We'll go ahead and hold the test button down. Passed. There you go. So it does work. It does indeed trip the GFCI. As you can see, it is off. I will flip the GFCI back on. And I'll hit reset. And we're back up and we're running again. It's pretty high voltage there for a second. There we go. So we are back and it's on and it is correct. So it will read through GFCI and it will read through a regular receptacle. Now I have another receptacle I can show you, but I can promise you that, well, let's just go show you real quick. Now before I came here, somebody put this receptacle in upside down. Now this is a big debate or we're not debating it today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an extension cord. I'm gonna plug an extension cord in here. That way we can read the voltage correctly. Well, not, maybe not correctly, but where you can see it. I'm gonna hang this right here because this is the circuit right here. So I want you to see, actually I might do it right here. I want you to see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go back over there again to the breaker. We're gonna see if we can find this. All right, so once again, we'll start on this side. We'll go all the way down till we find the breaker, which we already know shouldn't be on this side. And all I'm saying is because you have a lot of three poles, two poles and so on and so forth. So with this one, okay, see it's red. I thought it was this one at first, but it's not. So right now we're in the tool room, yet it says it's on four, but at least the writing does. But when I go here, right, and showing you all the bars, but nothing here. So it says here, and you see it says hub classroom. So let's turn this off and let's go and see if indeed it goes off. All right, there you have it. You can see, crazy, completely, completely labeled wrong. That's okay, at least we're, we're finding the problems here. Make sure that it's definitely dead. You actually have a non-contact voltage circuit tester here. I don't recommend using this exclusively, but at least tell you if there is anything going on here. Right now, it's not hot. So with it back on, let's use this and we'll see if it's hot or not. Okay, there you go. You see it's on. And the reason why is if you look in here, the reason why I didn't pick up right there is because the ground comes right through here. The neutral's here and the hot's actually on the back side. As you can flip the plug around here and you can see, you can see the black wire. So it's actually coming up through here. And that's why I read it right there. So I wouldn't bet your life on these non-contact voltage, no matter which brand you get, even if it's a fluke, it's just another tool in your toolbox. And of course, once you unplug it, it tells you what the last known voltage was. 121.6. One more little thing I want to show you, just in case you ever run into this, these sockets right here. Say you wanted to know, and you can see this is completely off. There's nothing tied to it anywhere. But if you wanted to know what circuit this was and you didn't know, that is where this right here comes in to play. You plug this in to that. You take this and you screw it in. And then you plug this in 
And now you can go back to your breaker and you can find exactly where it is. And when that thing is blinking, because you see right now it's completely off because there's no power here, because here's the power. But when that thing's not blinking, it's on. When it's blinking, it is off. So that's how you use that. You can use that in any kind of a light fixture or basically anything with a socket. And then the same thing goes for your clip clip jumpers. You just clip it onto your hot or whatever you want to. I'm gonna say the hot and the neutral let's go around. You take your plug. You take your plug in, plug it in, like so. And then you go to your breaker and you find it. It's that easy. I'm gonna give you some pros and cons of this because I will tell you a couple of things about these. Now, no matter which one you get, no matter it's Klein, Ideal, or whatever, they do have a hard time sometimes reading through GFCIs. This is a con that I've seen. So luckily for this one, it did really good, but there's not a whole lot going on here today. So it was pretty accurate with that. So sometimes when you put it in GFCI, it does sometimes read a little wonky. Sometimes it'll read two different breakers. Sometimes it won't read at all. It just depends. You wanna make sure that your GFCI definitely is on and it is working before you go try to test it. Pros of this one, it's very affordable. You can buy this, like I said, there will be an Amazon link at the end, the very first part in the description you will see, there'll be the Amazon link and you can just click on that thing to your heart's content and you can get that thing. I'm telling you, for a homeowner, sometimes this will save you a $200 call out fee just to call an electrician over. So guys, like I said, for under 50 bucks, 60 bucks, you can save a lot of time and frustration of calling that electrician, calling your neighbor to, or your friend or your, your daughter or your son or whatever to say, hey, check this breaker when it's off. Still not getting the right breaker every time, spending multiple time flipping breakers for no reason. Now you have an, a really good option to find that breaker every time accurately. I'm gonna leave it right here. I'll leave the link down below. If you decide to buy, it might help my channel grow. All the money goes back to this channel to keep me doing these videos for you guys. Guys, if you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. God bless, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day.